Here's your KNDY updated weatherology forecast for Northeast Kansas and Southeast Nebraska. I'm staff meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. High of 88 today under clear skies, southwest winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Clear skies again tonight, lows around 58. Get up-to-the-minute weather updates from the Weatherology Weather Center. I'm staff meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki on KNDY for Northeast Kansas and Southeast Nebraska. Currently, it's 50 degrees. Kansas Mid-America Network News. I'm Andy Hoosier. The U.S. Department of Transportation's Federal Highway Administration has announced that their latest report shows that the state of Kansas has the second most number of rural roadways nationwide. KSNT News reports that according to the FHWA and their annual report on nation's highways, bridges, and transportation conditions, Kansas and Georgia rank at the top of the list for having the most number of rural systems in their respective states compared to others nationwide. In the state of Georgia, they ranked number one with the number of rural roadways coming in with 79, with Kansas following Georgia at 77 systems statewide. According to the report, it says, quote, the urban clusters in Kansas are generally very small in area and are barely visible at that scale. Westward systems become sparse, especially in the southwest portion of the state. They say they define areas that are considered rural with populations less than 50,000 individuals. Mid-American Network News. It's Morgan, and I'm here to tell you, if you're in the market for a new vehicle, Midwest Kia is the place to be. We'll be celebrating the Kia Summer Sales event all month long. To get into the summer spirit, Midwest Kia is announcing the 100K giveaway. We will discount every new car on the lot for a total of 100000 in discounts. These discounts can be combined with all rebates and incentives, including new Kias that are marked with a summer sticker and extra discounts up to $1,500. Our team will be celebrating the summer sticker sales event each week with a new theme and the goal of moving our entire new car inventory this month. Remember, every new Kia comes with the industry-leading 10-year, 100,000-mile limited powertrain warranty and our simple, transparent, and fast car buying experience. Come celebrate the Kia Summer Sticker Sales event with the 100K giveaway all month long at Midwest Kia and see why people are singing. We want to see ya in a Midwest Kia. The state of Kansas has officially added new locations across the state as historical locations through the Kansas State Historical Society. As KSNT News reports that according to the social media post by the Kansas State Historical Society, they have added 11 new historic venues in the state, including the Pearl Opera House in Wabanshee County, the Transcontinental Airway Beacon located in Harper County, the Junior Office and Commanding Office Quarters in Fort Dodge in Ford County, the Corbin Education Center at Wichita State University in Sedgwick County, the Toy Baptist Church in Franklin County, the Prairie Oil and Gas Company building in Montgomery County, the Ninth Street Missionary Baptist in Douglas County, the Sturdivant Hardware Building in Neosho County, the Mount Vernon Cemetery in Atchison County, the McClellan Hotel in Sedgwick County, and the Biles Brothers Block in Crawford County. According to the association, all of them have also been nominated as the additions to the National Register of Historic Places nationwide. Kansas Mid-American Network News, I'm Andy Hoosier. Dane's Automotive and Tire in Waterville and Marysville is your reliable automotive repair shop. Servicing engines and transmissions, ACs, radiators, exhausts, and diagnostic checks. Did you know Dane's does tires? Carrying all major brands and sizes from trucks, ATVs, trailer, and farm implements, Dane's Automotive and Tire has you covered. With over 85 years combined experience, your locally owned and trusted repair and tire shop is Dane's Automotive and Tire in Waterville and Marysville. Nebraska Mid American Network News. I am Felix Johnson. After a city council vote of five to three in favor, the city of Hastings is now taking its very first steps in delegating authority for building inspections. During the delegated authority, businesses, developers, and citizens will only need to go through the city of Hastings for building inspections for fire code as opposed to going through the city and state fire marshal. Here's what Hastings Fire Chief Brad Starling has to say to KSB Local 4. Uh, we have several developers that have come to town recently that are used to working in municipalities that have delegated authority and so they think it's a good thing they they understand the benefits um, but we also have developers that uh, see it as maybe not beneficial or change and change is always difficult for people uh, but at the end 
Um, I think this change is going to be a good one. Delegated authority will be tried as a one-year pilot program for the city once it is in place. And the city will take time to look at the process and see if they will permanently adopt it. Nebraska Mid-American Network News. The spring. We're sorry. All circuits are busy now. Please try your call again later. We all know living in rural communities, it's difficult to rely on your cell phone reception. So don't rely on that same connection for your home internet. 5G is fine for your cell phone alone, but if you want a reliable home internet connection with the fastest symmetrical speeds, Blue Valley Technologies Fiber Internet Service is your solution. Visit bluevalley.net forward slash Y Fiber. Reporting local news, I'm Bruce Deerking. A fatality accident Sunday in Clay County claimed the life of 92-year-old Marion Brenner of Randolph. He had apparently failed to yield at an intersection on US-24, six miles east of Clay Center, colliding with Jeff Sells, age 44, of Mankato. Marion Brenner died as a result of the accident. Jeff Sells and a passenger, Deb Sells, age 66, and two juveniles in the other vehicle were not injured. Republican State Senator Dennis Pyle of Iowa has filed for re-election for Senate District No. 1. Pyle was first elected to the Senate in 2004 following a term in the House of Representatives. Monday was the filing deadline for the August primary. Wymore City Council at tonight's meeting is to discuss the police department with announcement that recently hired Chief Bobby Martinez has given two weeks notice and is reportedly taking a post in Valley, Nebraska. Fire Chief Mark Mainz, who has served as a backup, responding to some 300 calls this year, has suggested it may be time to consider a contract with Gage County or another arrangement, given the challenge of finding officers. Gage County currently assists, but is unable to answer minor calls or complaints. Martinez was hired for the post late last summer. Morrillville, Haddam, and Washington Fire Departments were dispatched May 22nd to a report of a pile of hay bales on fire. On June 1st, Barnes and Washington Fire Departments were dispatched to K-9 near Cross Creek Road to a report of a telephone pole on fire. Thursday, June 6th, the Eisenhower Center in Abilene will recognize the anniversary of D-Day. Among honorees interviewed for the event are three remaining veterans of World War II, Men that are members of Marysville American Legion Post 163 and include Chuck Tron, Jerry Bernard, and Vince Meineke. They were recognized at recent Memorial Day services at Marysville City Cemetery. MACT auditions for the summer play continue this evening, 6 until 8 p.m. at the Presbyterian Church Basement, 10th and Center in Marysville for the summer play Godspell, which will be presented July 26th through the 28th. For information, contact Carla Wolf in Marysville. Marshall County Community Band will begin their summer concert series Thursday evening, continuing Thursdays through July 18th, beginning at 7.30 p.m. in the Kester Museum Gardens in downtown Marysville. Lawn chairs or blankets encouraged. In the case of inclement weather, tune key and EY for alternate locations. <laughs> The City of Marysville Water Department advising water may be off most of the day Wednesday in the neighborhoods of South 5th and Walnut Street. The Water Department will be shutting off valves at 9 a.m. to replace fittings and a hydrant. This may affect service in the neighborhood of South 5th and Walnut Street most of the day on Wednesday. Please make arrangements to save drinking water as needed. Laverna A. Argenbright, age 84 of Waterville, passed away May 29th. Funeral service Thursday, 10 a.m. at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Waterville, burial in the Riverside Cemetery. Visitation Wednesday, noon until 8. Family will greet friends Wednesday from 6.30 until 8 at the Christy Anders Funeral Home in Waterville in charge of arrangements for Laverna Hargenbright. Marion P. Brenner, age 92 of Randolph, passed away Monday. Funeral service Monday, 10.30 at the Alert Covenant Church with burial in the Peach Grove Cemetery. Family will see friends Sunday from 2 until 4 at the Anders Fifely Funeral Home of Riley in charge of arrangements for Marion Brenner. David E. Taylor, age 70, of Blue Rapids, passed away Monday. Funeral service Friday, 10 a.m. 
at the Blue Rapids United Methodist Church, burial in the Prospect Hill Cemetery. Visitation Thursday noon until 8 at the Christy Anders Funeral Home in Waterville in charge of arrangements for David Taylor. A graveside service is planned Tuesday, June 11, 10 a.m. for James H. Jim Dodds, age 82 of Washington, who passed away May 29th. Service at the Washington City Cemetery with a ward funeral home in charge of arrangements for Jim Dodds. Richard D. Smith, age 63 of Topeka, passed away May 23rd. Memorial service June 17th, 11 a.m. at the Meriden United Methodist Church with burial to follow at the Marysville City Cemetery. Kinsley's in charge of local arrangements for Richard Smith. United Bank and Trust has been fulfilling the banking needs of families and businesses in Northeast Kansas for decades. United Bank and Trust is always advancing, and now they'd like to offer a free mobile deposit feature within the mobile banking app. Endorse, click, and submit your check image for deposit. It's a mobile fast world out there, and so is United Bank and Trust, the bank of your future. Visit our website at ubankonline.com or your local branch for more information. United Bank and Trust, banking for your way of life. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Here's your KNDY weatherology forecast for Northeast Kansas and Southeast Nebraska. Sunshine today with our highs in the upper 80s and lower 90s. Westerly winds between 5 and 15 and gusting as high as 25. Clear skies overnight tonight with our lows in the mid 50s and lower 60s. Northwest winds between 5 and 10 and gusting as high as 25. Sunshine throughout Thursday with our highs in the lower to mid 80s. Northwest winds between 5 and 15 and gusting as high as 25. Clear skies throughout Thursday night with our lows in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Staying sunny into Friday with our highs in the upper 80s and lower 90s. Scattered showers and thunderstorms are possible in a Friday night, partly cloudy with our lows in the upper 50s and lower 60s. And more showers may continue early Saturday than sunshine with our highs in the lower to mid 80s. Staying partly cloudy throughout Saturday night with our lows in the mid to upper 50s. Staying sunny into Sunday as well with our highs in the upper 70s and lower 80s. And mostly clear skies throughout Sunday night with our lows in the mid to upper 50s. Still more sunshine into Monday with our highs in the upper 70s and lower 80s. I'm meteorologist Carol Foster. Average high temperature... Early June, 83, record high on this date, 104. The average low, 61. The record low, 40. Sunset this evening, 850. Sunrise in the morning at 602. Passing round of showers yesterday afternoon, we had just a few sprinkles here at Studios. 54 this morning on a cold front moving across overnight. That's check of the morning news and weather for this Wednesday, the 5th of June. E and News Time 716. I'm Bruce Dierking reporting. Farmers, control planting season this year with Wagner Custom Planting of Blue Rapids, Kansas. Top-notch equipment and experience that'll save time. Call 402-618-4404. Precision planting and specially tailored solutions for any sized operation. Wagner Custom Planting ensures exceptional results come harvest. Call Dylan at 402-618-4404 and let him handle the stress of planting season. Elevate your planting experience and maximize your farm efficiency with Wagner Custom Planting. What makes Tony's Meat Market in Marysville exceptional? It's you, the customer. The highest quality meat selection with prices that won't break the bank. Stop in Tuesday through Saturday and find yourself the perfect cut of beef, pork, or chicken for all your grilling summer needs. Special orders available, a drive-up window for your convenience, and a friend from the first visit. Swing by Tony's Meat Market on Highway 36 in Marysville and come see me, Tony, the meat man, and the rest of the crew and get your grilling party kicked off right. From ABC Sports, this is Rich Cantu. Major League Baseball banned former Pirates infielder Tucapito Marcano for life for betting over $150,000 on games, including Pirates games. And he wasn't the only one caught. Michael Kelly with the Oakland A's uh, suspended for a year for doing it when he was down in the minor leagues. And three others, uh, Jay Grimm, Andrew Saul Frank, and Jose Rodriguez, suspended for a year as well. ESPN's Jeff Passan. Separately, Ipe Mitsuhara, former translator for Shohei Otani, pled guilty to bank and tax fraud charges on Tuesday for ripping off the Dodgers superstar to the tune of $17 million to pay gambling debts. 
Also Tuesday, Bruce Pham charged in an illegal sports betting scheme involving NBAer John Tay Porter, who was banned for life in April. Bottom 10 in Philadelphia. Phillies Brewers tied at one. Free runner on second. Nick Castellanos at the dish. The first pitch. Swung on, line to right. That should win it. It's down for a hit up against the fence. Merrifield scoring. Castellanos <laughs> heading for second. And the Phillies heading to the dug out of the dugout as they have just won it 2-1. to one. On WIP, Guardians and Cubs both rally from five runs down to beat the Royals and White Sox, respectively. French Open quarterfinals. Novak Djokovic withdraws with a knee injury. Women's action. American Coco Goff over Ons Jabor to advance and face Iga Swiatek in the semis. I have nothing to lose. All the pressure is on her. Quarterfinal action today. Arena Sabalenka takes on Mira Andriva. WNBA Chicago Sky rookie Angel Reese ejected in an 88-75 loss to the New York Liberty. The Storm beat the Mercury 80-62, and the Sun remain undefeated at 9-0, dispatching the Mystics 76-59. This is Rich Cantu, ABC Sports. Get in zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? Gotta change my oil. How about new Valvoline Restore and Protect? It restores and protects your engine to run like new. Get in zone. It restores your engine to, like, factory clean? And protects. Get in zone. So Valvoline Restore and Protect restores and protects. Now you can get five quarts with an STP Extended Life oil filter for $37.99. Get in zone. Auto zone. Restrictions apply. Everyone on the road is trying to make it to their destination safely. You can help by staying aware of the large trucks and buses around you. They take longer to stop, have large blind spots, and make wide turns that require caution from other drivers. It takes all of us working together to share the road safely. Learn more at www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. Paid for by FMCSA. J&M Liquor invites you out to the Sam Wymore Days. Join us June 7th through the 9th for the flea market at Arbor State Park under the Big Top. There will be delicious food and antiques, collectibles, homemade gifts, and more. Enjoy the carnival, parade, beer garden, and more. From your recent friends at J&M Liquor and Wymore. Marshall's Coin Shop is excited about the annual Sam Wymore Days that's coming up. Please join us for lots of fun with a parade, a pancake breakfast, and a backseat driver contest, and much more. From the friendly staff at Marshall's Coin Shop in Wymore, always looking to buy gold, silver, old currency, and rare coins. Sam Wymore Days will be starting June 7th, and Laughlin Hoovet Funeral Home invites everyone to check it out. There will be a parade, food, street dance, and lots to see and do. It's fun for all ages, so come on out. From Laughlin Hoovet Funeral Home at 505 North 9th Street, serving Wymore with dignity. From ABC News, Wall Street Now. Lots of jobs are still available, just not quite as many as before. The Labor Department says employers posted 8.1 million openings in April, the fewest since 2021, but still at historically high levels. Stock traders take that as a sign the labor market is softening and hope it'll convince the Fed to start cutting interest rates. The Dow Jones on Tuesday gained 140 points to close at 38,711. The S&P and Nasdaq each picked up 0.15 percent. AT&T says a technical issue that was preventing some calls to other wireless carriers has been fixed. No word yet on what the exact cause was. Both T-Mobile and Verizon say their systems are working normally. And new British banknotes featuring the portrait of King Charles III have entered circulation. But it may be some time before they're commonly seen in wallets and purses. The new notes will be slipped into circulation as the old ones featuring Queen Elizabeth II wear out. Jim Ryan, ABC News. Attention farmers and livestock owners. Looking for top quality feed and essential supplies for your animals? Look no further than Home City Grain. Offering a wide variety of feed options for small and large livestock as well as smart lick lick tubs. Perfect for providing essential nutrients to your herd. Contact Home City Grain today at 785-799-3326 or find them online at homecitygrain.com for up-to-the-minute grain bids, weather outlook, and more. 
Good Wednesday morning. Sam's back with your latest market information here on the Mid-America Ag Network. Well, as we enter yet another new day of trade, we will inch closer to the opening bell here this morning. But before we get there, let's get you a nice recap on how things finished up yesterday. And it's a pretty easy description. Very volatile trading and much lower pretty much across the board. And the grains, the oil seeds, the wheat market took the brunt of the hit there. Minimal losses for both corn and soybeans, but still in the negative figures. And red through the majority of the livestock as well. Now, June live cattle was up 15 cents at 182.17, but August and beyond all lower. August down 42 cents to 178.45. Nothing but red for the feeders. August feeder cattle down 17 at 256.02. September down to 257.60. That was 27 cents in the red and a very troublesome day for the hogs yesterday. June lean hogs down 95 cents to 92.70. July to 93.92. That was 235 in the red. Into the grains again, as mentioned yesterday, there was some weakness in the wheat market, especially double digit losses pretty much all across across Chicago Spring, Kansas City wheat. Mixed volatile trading this morning through the overnight session. We see July Kansas City wheat currently down one and a quarter at 686. September right at seven dollars a bushel. That's down one and a quarter cent. Now Chicago and spring wheat are doing some a bit better this morning, but again some volatile trading already in the wheat market. July oats up two and a quarter to three sixty seven and three quarters. In the row crops we see July corn down one and three quarters at four forty and three quarters set. September down a penny at four forty seven and a quarter. Soybeans in need of a little bit of recovery today. July beans back up two and a half again through the overnight session, but at least trending well up to eleven eighty one and a half. August to eleven seventy nine and a half. That's up two cents. July soy meal up seventy to three fifty five eighty. However, soy oil thirteen points in the red down to forty three forty nine. Cotton is also stronger this morning. July cotton currently up ninety five points at seventy four forty three. A big driver today is due to this strong June dollar up twenty eight points at one oh four point thirty three. From Kansas State University, this is Agriculture Today. I'm Jacob Clout. Western ragweed can take over pastures and cause spots within them to decrease in grass production. K-State range scientist Keith Harmony explains an influential situation back in 2020 that prompted a study about western ragweed in Hayes, Kansas. We had a year in 2020 where we had quite a bit of ragweed in some of our pastures around the western part of the state. In fact, some of our, our research pastures here at Hayes, the density was, was rather high just over 11 plants per square foot. So that's that's a pretty pretty high density. And so we thought that was a pretty good opportunity for us to, to do a, a study on in the following years on those pastures. Harmony relays the results of the study done by K-State on Western Ragweed. Well, we had eight pastures available, and in four of those pastures, we put on a treatment of dicamba, um, at a pretty low rate. It was a 6-ounce rate. We were looking to suppress the western ragweed, but we actually got some decent control. And so we had a, had a significant difference in the ragweed density in the year that we treated four of those pastures. Four pastures we treated and we controlled the ragweed, and four pastures we did not treat. We, we just let the ragweed go through its natural natural course. And there was significant difference in the density that year from the treatment. We had almost no ragweed at the end of the season in the ones we treated. And in the ones that we did not treat, we had just under five ragweed plants per square foot. Not as not as high of a density as the prior year. We, we got some reduction just naturally, just from precipitation events or lack thereof. But we still had a significant difference in, in the amount of ragweed that we had in those pastures. He compares other studies conducted on western ragweed at the K-State Agricultural Research Center in Hayes with the most current one. And a couple other studies that were done out here at Hayes, we found that there was a, a threshold of about 35% of the composition, dry matter composition, so of the weight, 35% of the weight being western ragweed. Um, if it got to that level, it would start to reduce the amount of grass in the pasture or the grass production. Um, we didn't hit that level. Even with the densities of ragweed that we had, we did not reach that level of dry matter composition in the pastures. That was Keith Harmony, Kansas State University range scientist on western ragweed and its ability to impact grass growth in pastures. Learn more in a recent Beef Tips article on www.ksubeef.org titled, How Does Western Ragweed Impact Pasture Production? I'm Jacob Clout. This has been Agriculture Today over the K-State Radio Network. 
Could simple landscaping be a secret weapon in fighting urban crime? It's working in some urban areas. We will share that story today from the Old Farmer's Almanac. If you're a farmer or rancher, chances are you've thought about joining Kansas Farm Bureau. So what's stopping you? Your membership means you have a seat at the table when it comes to the issues that affect your farm. Things like trade, taxes, water, and regulations. The state's largest farm advocacy organization brings your message to policy decision makers at the county, state, and national level. The voice of agriculture becomes your voice and fights for Kansas farmers and ranchers. And a Kansas Farm Bureau membership includes other benefits. For about $50 a year, you'll receive discounts on equipment and supplies, cell phone plans, financial and legal support, home and office supplies, and more. You'll also receive Kansas Living, a quarterly lifestyle magazine featuring real stories of farmers and producers around the state, plus great recipes, crafts, and things to see and do in Kansas. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash farmer rancher to learn more. With more practical tips and useful advice, this is the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report for Wednesday, June 5th, the 157th day of the year. Actors Ron Livingston and Mark Wahlberg share a birthday, and 34 tornadoes tore through Arkansas on this day in 1916. It might seem obvious to most of us, but an experiment in urban areas is showing that cleaning and greening vacant lots can have a dramatic impact on quality of life. In Philadelphia, the U.S. Forest Service has been removing trash and debris and planting grass on abandoned lots. On average, violence and burglaries has dropped about 30% in those neighborhoods. Similar reductions were seen in vandalism, noise complaints, and illegal dumping. What's more, residents say they feel safer and spend more time outdoors socializing with neighbors. Amazing what a little tidying up can do. That is the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report. Learn more at almanac.com. Thunderstorms fired yesterday afternoon. Thunderstorm warning at a point for Washington County. Some areas got a little bit of rain. We got very little. Just a, just a few sprinkles here and there at the studios in Marysville with passing showers. Highs well into the 80s again today, but we start out the morning at 54 degrees, 51 overnight. It's sunny outside. Belleville Healthcare and Rehab Center hopes everyone will seek a way to help our homeless veterans who may be suffering from disabilities due to their service to America. From Belleville Healthcare and Rehab Center, specialized care with in-house therapies, short-term rehab to home, advanced therapy, and total wellness. Kansas Mid-America Network Sports. I'm Andy Hoosier. The Kansas City Royals are moving through game number two of their road trip against the Cleveland Guardians with their first pitch tonight at 5.30 Central Time. It's a three-game series against the Guardians before heading back home to Kauffman Stadium to take on the Seattle Mariners. The Royals continue to battle, not being able to close out all of their series against each team as they went 1-3 and three against the San Diego Padres at home, winning only game number three in a 4-3 to three victory. The good news for the Royals, however, they are extending their lead in that number two slot for the American League Central as they are up over the Minnesota Twins with the overall record sitting 36-25. and 25. The Twins are at 33-26. and 26 with the Guardians at three games up on the Royals at 39 and 20 in that number one position. Kansas City starts their three game series over the weekend starting on Friday against the Seattle Mariners before welcoming in the New York Yankees for another four game series starting on Monday. Marysville Senior Legion Baseball team hosting Corning this evening. Doubleheader with games at 6 and 8 p.m. at Feldhausen Field. During the recent Catbackers event in Marysville, Kansas State University basketball coach Jerome Tang was on hand. I'm here with Jerome Tang, the head coach of Kansas State men's basketball. Coach Tang, in your short time here, what has stood out to you most about the Catbackers tour as a whole? Oh, just the passion of our fan base. Everywhere we go, there's just such an enthusiasm for all things K-State and the love that you feel. And man, I, it's just it's so exciting to work at a place where people really, really care. And, uh, and I feel it everywhere we go. I 100% agree. I was a student athlete myself, and I, I felt that same energy every day. So it's different for me now being on the other side. As a fan, it's different, but I love it as well. The upcoming season, obviously, you guys got a pretty new team, new squad. In fact, Marysville in 2017, and I believe in 2021 or 22, I can't remember, they were state runner-up. In 2017, they won the state championship. I was a guard myself. So if you're looking for any new uh, additions, uh, I'm right here if, if you, if you want to join. 
Wait, you got any eligibility left? Let's, let's... No, no. Use the COVID year. Use the COVID year. Have you seen any of the uh, black squirrels in town? I have not. But I'm colorblind, so oh, it's yeah. tough. But I, I've heard that it's sunny in Marysville every day. I need to spend more time out here. I don't know if it's sunny, but, you know, just the other day we had a rain. But the black squirrels, we actually had, we're the only town in the U.S. with black squirrels. Wow. Unique fact I thought I'd throw in there. I didn't know if you knew that. But if on your way out, if you look, there's probably 23 or 24, 25 maybe black squirrel statues we have sitting around town. So okay. pay attention to that on your way out. Okay. What's your favorite restaurant in Manhattan? I, I've actually been cheating lately because my parents just moved to Manhattan. And my mom is a terrific cook. So as often as I can, I, I get over to my parents' house to eat. No doubt a home-cooked meal beats anything, am I right? Yes, it does. What do you do? I mean, obviously, you're caught up in basketball a lot, being, being the head coach. Outside of that, do you have any hobbies? Well, I fancy myself a movie guy, but I have not been to the movie theater in Manhattan yet. And so that's usually been my escape place that I'd go to because I can't have my phone on and people don't talk to you during the movie, you know. But I, I, have, to, I have to make my way to the movie theater. Uh, but like on my downtime, it's like watch a movie, block everything out and when I do have it. Love that, love that. Well, I appreciate your time, Coach, and uh, go Cats. Uh, ain't no problem. Thanks a lot. Go Cats. The City of Marysville Water Department advising water may be off most of the day Wednesday in the neighborhoods of South 5th and Walnut Street. The Water Department will be shutting off valves at 9 a.m. to replace fittings and a hydrant. This may affect service in the neighborhood of South 5th and Walnut Street most of the day on Wednesday. Please make arrangements to save drinking water as needed. KNDY.